so I was mindlessly scrolling on Twitter the other day when I saw I had a mention from none other than Florin Pop, where he was pulling me into a discussion on how we could make something like this with these inverted border radiuses. Border radii? Whatever. Making these inverted thingies using CSS. While we could complicate things, my first suggestion was a simple mask image, but some people in the discussion wondered if it would be simpler to come up with a CSS solution that didn't involve making a mask in some vector software first, and with that, the challenge was on. So I immediately went on over to CodePen and started hacking away. First up, I saw this as three boxes with one of them overlapping, and nowadays, for me, overlapping content means CSS grid, and we could easily do this by making a two by three grid. So I first created the three divs where everything would live inside of in my HTML. I needed to get a picture of a house, so luckily in CodePen there's that handy little assets button down at the bottom where it lets you search through on Splash, and eventually I found the perfect one. Now before mucking around with trying to get those inverted border radiuses, radii, the first thing I had to do was just get the layout in place, so I made a very simple grid to place the content on to position everything properly on the page, and I added a little bit of styling just to sort of get us in the right direction so I could focus on making those little corner bits. Now my first thought for creating the spacing around all of these was to use a gap, but that presented a little bit of an issue because that gap didn't really go everywhere I needed it to be, and it also created a gap where I didn't actually want one to be, but it still seemed like the logical first step, at least it gave me a little bit of that spacing that I did need. Now, I'm not sure how I was going to fill in all the rest of those empty spaces. The first thing I started doing was bringing in the border radiuses on everything, just so I could be making some forward progress while I was stuck on other stuff. I set them all up as a custom property because I wanted them all to be the same, and I had to apply them in a lot of different places, and this would just make it easier if I ever needed to change things down the line, having one custom property that can control them all. I was also having a little bit of trouble with seeing everything I was working on. So in this price area here, I changed the background color to red just so I could see it. Whenever you're doing CSS stuff, if things aren't super clear, just throw a random bright color on something so you can get it exactly where you need it to, and then you just put the color back to what you need. Now with all of that done, I was basically back to wanting to get all the spacing correct with the, the white lines sort of looping around so I could finally focus on those inverted border radius parts. To be able to do that, there was two things. On this price, I needed black to go underneath it, and I also needed the white to go around it. And so my first idea was to use an outline which created that white gap around the entire thing and looked like it was exactly what I needed it to be. And then I was gonna fill in the empty space underneath it with a box shadow, because if you don't give those a blur, they'll just be a solid shape that you can offset and it would be exactly what I need. Except I ran into the issue where box shadows actually render underneath outlines and it took me a while to figure out why my box shadow wasn't working. I got a little bit frustrated, but then realized what the issue was. And my first instinct was to go to a pseudo element because I love pseudo elements. But then I thought, wait a second, I'm using a box shadow as a solid shape. I could just put two box shadows on here, one of them being black that's just gonna be offset downwards that will fill in that space underneath, and the other one being white with no blur, no offset in any direction, but having a spread on it, which basically replicates the outline that I originally had. And with that, I had everything in place. The layout was basically there. Those are a few little tweaks we could do to fix it up a bit, but I felt like it was time to try and tackle those corner bits. And the idea that I had for this was using a radial gradient in a way to like hide content away basically. But because the corners were so small, I wanted to make sure my idea would even work. So I opened up a new code pen and in there I started playing around with a radial gradient just to make sure that I could line things up the way I wanted them to. And basically what I discovered is if you do a radial gradient with a circle at 100%, 100%, and then the color stops for both of them are at the same place that are the same as the width of the actual element, then you get this shape here, which might not look like it's very practical or what you need, but if we add some transparency to it, we can keep the part that we want, we can hide the other part. So then with that knowledge of knowing I could get the shape that I need, I created two pseudo elements using my before and after on the house image, which is that top div, and it's not on the image itself because we can't have pseudo elements on images. And so in a way it was lucky that I put a div and then put the image inside of there. Now I had to figure out how big I wanted them to be. And what I did is create a locally scoped custom property here called size that was then referencing my border radius. I'm not sure if this is the best idea, but it seemed to make sense that the radius would correspond to how big I needed things to be. So I went with it and then I just brought in that same trick, but instead of something that was 500 pixels by 500 pixels, I made it the same size as our border radius, which is the one rem. And then it came time to position these little guys in the right place. And and while this could be really hard and we could definitely just sprinkle some random numbers on it in 
until we can get it into the right place. Position absolute actually works fantastically with grid because you can actually assign specific grid columns and grid rows to absolutely positioned elements. And then the top, bottom, left, and right properties will be relative to those grid cells that you've assigned it rather than to the entire element, meaning we could get into the exact little corners we wanted to get without having to magic number our way there. Now it took a little mucking around, but I eventually got to the right spot. And then I just turned my gradients to be white instead of having the red on there. And we were mostly there, except in this one corner here that you can see that little bit that was still sticking down. And after using that box shadow trick on the price to fill in the black area, I figured why not just put a box shadow on this that's pure white, move it down a little bit and hide that little bit that was sticking out. Next up, I needed to do the little black area that was next to the price. And for that one, I just added another pseudo element this time on the house price and basically used the same type of styling. Now I did realize I ran into a little bit of a problem here because the gradient that I'd set up was using a white color to hide stuff. In this case, I needed to add some extra color in there to create the shape. So I went back to my original selector and I changed the color of the gradient to be using a custom property. So if I ever needed to update it, it was very easy to change. Now here I actually just went through to update the size custom property that I had to add an underscore in front of it. I stole this naming convention from Leaveru where if it has an underscore in front of it, you're, it's just saying it's a private property or something that's locally scoped rather than being a global property that you'd find in your root. You might not like it, you don't have to use it, but I've been really digging using it lately. And at this point I was really happy with the results, but there was two problems. One of them, you might have noticed they're really grainy little corners right now, and they do not look super smooth, like that one above that's being created with the box shadow. And speaking of that one above, you'll notice that the inner radius and the outer radius are actually different from one another. It looks a lot more natural. The one I have, this the corner looks kind of funky, and this actually looked a bit more like the one Florin shared with me, but since I'd gone down this rabbit hole, I wanted to make sure that I could actually get this to look like a much more natural bend. And looking at that one above as an example, I figured all I needed to do was actually for that black corner, increase the border radius on it to make it a lot bigger. And luckily I'd set most things up with custom properties. So it was actually fairly easy to do this where I just used a calc to multiply the border radius we were using uh, to make it bigger than what it was. And then I just experimented with different numbers until I found what I wanted. I'm sure there's some math equation that you could do to get something perfect. But in this case, I did just sprinkle that magic number dust on there until it worked. Now in doing this, I did have to update the left and the bottom because when I was making that size bigger, it was influencing those and it was breaking everything. I probably could have a custom property that would be for the size of the gap and then a second one for the border radius, and then it would all sort of work together really well. But with that in place, I was actually really happy with how it looked, but I wanted to get rid of the graininess on the corners. So I sort of cheated a little bit here, and I went back to using a calc, this time on the positioning of the color stops, where one of the color stops is based on the size custom property we have, and the other color stop, we're just adding one pixel to it. So there is technically one pixel of blur there, but it's so small, it just sort of gets rid of that graininess and keeps the shape looking pretty nice, in my opinion. Now, one of the really nice things about having set this up with custom properties is I could actually change the size of the border radius really easily now, and everything just adapts. And so that way, when your designer comes back to you to ask you for a change, it's not something where you're going hunting down 10 different places. You use that value, you can update one thing, and it it just works, which is super handy. And with that, I was basically done. I fixed up the image at the top because I was having some responsive issues with it and I adjusted the padding on the price. And I think in the end, it worked out really well, but it probably would have been faster just to open up that vector software and make a mask, but I'm still really happy with how this turned out.